The Zoll AED-3 BLS includes advanced configuration options that enable you to quickly and easily configure your AED. This can be done directly on the device using the AED's full-color interactive touchscreen display. In this module, we will familiarize you with the advanced configuration options available on the Zoll AED-3 BLS. To access touchscreen configuration options, you will need to place the AED in configuration or non-clinical mode. You can do this by simply holding the on button down for about 7 to 10 seconds. You should hear a click and the AED will display a blue Zoll logo screen. The AED will now display two large icons, a blue gear icon and a red heart icon. When this screen appears, you'll receive prompts indicating the type of AED you have, and it will also indicate Unit OK. Unit OK. When selected, the blue gear icon will bring you to the basic configuration screen. The red heart icon will immediately place the AED in rescue mode and begin rescue prompts. Note that if you do not select the blue gear configuration icon within 30 seconds, the AED will automatically go into rescue mode. Selecting the blue gear icon will open the basic configuration screen. In the screen, you will see four icons. The last icon on this screen is the locking feature that allows only authorized users to access the advanced configuration features of the AED. Press the yellow lock icon and enter the passcode. The default passcode on a new Zoll AED-3 is 123456. If you wish to, you can create your own passcode in the advanced configuration settings. We will cover this later in this video when we discuss advanced configuration settings. In advanced configurations, there are eight icons. The language icon and green arrow export icon have identical functionality to the icons you saw in the previous basic configuration screen. The language icon allows you to change the language of voice and text prompts on your AED. Note that language options differ by region and you may have only one option. The export icon allows you to export configuration files or clinical case files to a USB drive or over Wi-Fi. The orange shock icon allows you to select the energy setting for the first, second, and third shock for both adult and pediatric patients. This allows you to set the shock energy based on your specific protocols. This feature is for medically trained, more advanced users, and it's recommended that you do not change the factory default settings unless you're qualified to do so. To change the energy setting, select the orange shock icon, select either adult or child energy settings, and select the energy settings you would like to use from the table. Select OK, then select Save from the previous screen to save your settings. The purple overlapping hands icon allows you to modify the CPR prompting and intervals based on your particular preferences and protocols. Factory default settings are based on the most current guideline recommendations and should be left in place for the majority of users. If you do prefer to change the setting, select the item you wish to modify by touching the respective option on the screen, choosing the prompt or interval setting you prefer, and then select Save. The blue gear icon is similar to the item that appeared on the previous basic configuration screen. However, when you open this setting screen, you'll notice there are advanced configuration settings that can now be accessed at the bottom left of the screen. In this screen, you can select 1. The number of clinical case files you want the AED to store. 2. How frequently you would like automatic self-tests done. 3 whether you want to transmit these self-test reports to your program management platform over Wi-Fi. Four, how you would like to display feedback data on the screen. Five, if you'd like to change your password. And six, how you want the AED to be identified in case review. Make your desired changes and select Save. 
The AED3 BLS stores up to two clinical cases and can do self-tests either weekly or daily. We recommend that the default settings of saving two clinical cases and weekly, seven days self-tests be left as they are. The ability to store two clinical cases helps reduce the potential of accidentally writing over case files, and weekly test intervals conserve battery power. If you're not using the automatic Wi-Fi feature to transmit your device status to your program management software, you should disable this by turning the Auto Self Test feature to off. If you are transmitting to program management over Wi-Fi, you should enable this feature by selecting On. In some instances, a responder's protocols may call for the use of audio recording when an AED is used in a rescue. The default setting for this feature is off because the majority of response protocols do not call for it. However, if your specific response protocols do call for audio recording, you may enable this feature by selecting On. Note that this feature is only available on the BLS model of the Zoll AED3. You can change your passcode by selecting Advanced Settings from the bottom left of the screen and then setting up your new supervisor passcode. Make certain you write down your new passcode before you save and exit the Advanced Features area. The device ID is the serial number of the AED by default. You can change this default setting if you wish. For example, you may wish to identify the AED by the address of a building or its location in that building. Simply touch the device ID box and a screen will appear which allows you to type in the new device ID. Type in your preferred ID then select OK to return to the previous screen. The Device Display feature allows you to select how feedback data is displayed on the screen during a rescue. When you've completed changes on this page, make certain you save your configuration by pressing the Save button. The blue report icon with the green Wi-Fi waves icon is where you set up your Wi-Fi connection for transmission to Zoll Case Review. Case Review allows you to access case data such as ECG and CPR performance. Note that you will need a case review account to do this. Similar to setting up your cell phone or laptop to a Wi-Fi network, you can select the Quick Setup, find an available network by pressing the green Wi-Fi icon on the top right of the screen, select the network, Click OK, then enter the password in the screen that appears. Once you've set up your network ID and password, it's recommended that you select the Test Wi-Fi option at the bottom left of the display to ensure your Wi-Fi connection is working. If your Wi-Fi test is successful, you will see a screen that states Testing Server Connectivity Complete. Select OK and then select Save from the following screen. This will bring you back to the Advanced Settings icon screen. The Server Settings portion of this screen should not be altered. This is the IP address that the data will be transmitted to. The default setting is for Case Review and transmits data to your Case Review account through Zoll Data. The blue icon with the AED and Wi-Fi waves is the Wi-Fi setup for your AED program management, including Zoll Defibrillator Dashboard. If you have AED program management or Defib Dashboard and wish to transmit your device readiness status over Wi-Fi automatically, this is where you would configure it. Note that automatic transmission of device readiness is not available for all program management software products. Contact your Zoll representative for information regarding compatible program management software products. As with transmitting case data over Wi-Fi, you will need to identify and select your network and enter a valid password. Again, test your Wi-Fi connection to ensure that you have proper connectivity. The server setting has been pre-configured to transmit data to Zoll online. If you're using Zoll Defib Dashboard, this setting would be changed to transmit to your server. Note that customers who order Zoll in-premise case review and defib dashboard will have their devices configured when they're installed by Zoll. At the bottom right of the screen, in both the Report Wi-Fi Setup and Program Management Wi-Fi Setup screens, there's an option for IT Setup. 
It is recommended that you involve your network administrator if you wish to make any configuration changes in this screen. The Zoll AED3 BLS supports both WPA2 PSK, which uses a pre-shared key, and for more secured networks, WPA2 802.1X, which requires a certificate. Your network administrator will know which method is preferred. The yellow arrow icon is the import function, which allows you to import configurations from other AED3 BLS units. This is useful if you have multiple Zoll AED3 devices and wish to configure them all the same. You simply insert the USB drive with the configuration files from the AED3 BLS device you wish to clone into the USB port, select what types of file you wish to clone, and select OK. This will change the configuration of your AED to whatever configuration you've selected from your USB drive. This process can save you time if you need to configure multiple AEDs with the same settings. We hope you found this video useful in helping you configure your Zoll AED3 BLS. Should you have additional questions regarding configuration of your Zoll AED3 BLS, you can contact Zoll Technical Support at techsupport at zoll.com.